get the full benefits of the, the new life in Christ and get a new beginning, Lord. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank yeah. you for loving us. Be with us in Jesus' name, amen. 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 One love. One love. One love. <laughs>
series the economy of heaven and we've been talking about how the Holy Spirit wants to bring freedom not only in our life but in the lives of those around us. Amen. Amen. We don't want to be a Dead Sea Christian. We want to have a river of life flowing out of us. Everything's dead in the Dead Sea. Why? There's no outflow. There's only inflow. So we don't want to be that way. We want to have outflow. And Jesus said, out of our bellies, not out of the, just simply the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, and all these <coughs> established leaders, but he says, out of the heart, <coughs> out of the hearts of believers will flow rivers of living water. And that's what that's what uh, that's what God's been doing. He's been trying to teach us in this in this series how to tap into that river. How to tap into that river. There's a river that's flowing 
Um, we see it in a couple places in Scripture, but in Revelation, it says there's a river, a crystal clear river, flowing from the temple of God. And we are the temple, amen? We are the temple of God. The temple of the God Himself lives inside of us through the avenue of the Holy Spirit. The agency of the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And He wants to come out. He doesn't want to he doesn't want to be on home confinement. He wants to get out and move around. Amen? He wants to speak to folks. He wants to touch folks. And we're learning how to tap into that river. And one of the things that we've looked at is this, this prayer language. It says when we pray in an unknown tongue in 1 Corinthians 14 and 4, it says we don't pray to man, but we pray directly to God in the Spirit. We're praying out these mysteries. Amen? It could be a mystery about our life. Matt? There is a book of Matthew, but there is no book of Matt Mullins in the Bible. You know, but in the spirit there is. He wrote a book about you. Before you were even in your mother's womb, he knew you. And he wrote it down. He wrote down everything about you. Bobby, he wrote everything down about you. You know? And he wants to He doesn't want to keep these things a secret. He wants to reveal it to us. But he he doesn't hide things from us. He hides things for us. You know, the Bible says it's the glory of God to conceal the matter, but it's the glory of kings to search it out. He doesn't hide it from us, but for us. He wants us to come and, and, and have adventures with Him and come and hang out. And He wants to reveal these things to us. Amen? Isn't that exciting? Yes, sir. That the God of the universe wants to hang out and reveal things to you that... Things that I hadn't seen, things that ear hadn't heard. Things that in the past they weren't able to understand and comprehend, but now, he says, through his spirit, he wants to make these things known to us. So peaceful out there, isn't it? Hear the birds singing. <laughs> Love it. Um, in First Corinthians. 14 and 26 so he God has set aside an entire chapter in the Bible to talk about this prayer language that we keep talking about 1 Corinthians 14 an entire chapter and the four different diversities that we've gone over again and again they're all interwoven inside of 1 Corinthians 14 one of them that will strongly benefit us that we keep encouraging is us for personal edification he wants to build us up spiritually Okay. He's talking about church meetings in, in 1 Corinthians 14. Uh, in the Corinthian church, they would come together, but a lot of them were in carnality. They were in strife. They were in, in envy and all these different things. And they were out of order a lot of times. And he was bringing some correction. But one of the things he says, he says, when we come together, he says, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, and has an interpretation. Amen? Look, when we come together, listen. Not just the guy standing up here, not just me, not just whoever's speaking that day, but it says each of you will have a tongue, will have an interpretation, will have a psalm, will have a revelation. That's you guys. That's that river I'm talking about. And we come together to what? To encourage one another? To stir one another up in love and good works? And not just to contain it in a building. Right? Church isn't something, religious activity that we do every morning here or every Wednesday night at the local church that you attend or every Sunday. It's a, We are the church. Amen? And we take this with us wherever we go. And Time and time again, every week, we keep hearing testimonies about how the Lord will speak to us, through us, to someone else. And the next thing you know, that person is getting saved, or that person is getting into recovery, or, or that person is getting healed. All these different things that the Lord is wanting to do through us every week. But what he's been real big on the last couple weeks is what? Unity. This right here, coming together. It says there's a blessing commanded on this place. Right? We saw where the anointing flows down in a place of unity. 
We saw the strategy of the enemy. We took the mask off of God and, and how he's coming against. Look, the enemy's coming against this. And each of us in here has something that can benefit the next man. It's called divine connections. And we're going to look at it today in Scripture, in Philippians. But there's a grace that's on your life that can be passed to the next man. For me, um, you know, I share with you guys, been, been drug and alcohol free for 23 years, since 1999. There was also a grace on my life to abide. Seasons of prayer. Bobby and some of you other guys have been through seasons of prayer, and, and, and those are seasons of preparation. Right? So there's a grace to abide that can actually be imparted to the next generation through a divine connection. But watch, here's what the enemy wants to do. The enemy wants to get us to a place, and the Bible says that Jesus could only do just a few healings in his own hometown. He couldn't do any extraordinary miracles. Why? Because they were familiar with him. It says they were offended with him. Right? People that knew him became offended. They became acquainted with him. And really, as we get to know people, it should be a tighter bond. Right? But what the enemy will try to do is he'll start trying to, like, put people under a magnifying glass. Mm. You know, you start seeing this, and you start seeing that, and next thing you know, you're pointing this out, and you're pointing that out. Why? Because, one, a house divided can't stand. Mm -hmm. And his job is to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. He's trying to tear the house down. Two, the anointing, Psalm 133, it flows down from the head. And if there's no unity, because Psalm 133 is talking about unity, if there's no, a uni no unity, there's not going to be any flow of anointing. You know what I mean? There's not going to be any, and the anointing is what sets people free. The anointing is what's going <coughs> to set me free, whatever struggle I'm struggling with. The anointing of God is what's going to set me free, and then in turn set others free. So we saw that in Psalms 2, how Jesus steps up into heaven. This is after he rose from the dead, Psalm 2. He steps up into heaven with his blood, and the Father says, What do you want for this price that you paid? And you know what he said? his response was? I want the nations. And inside of Psalm 2, we see the strategy of the enemy to stop that, and it's he comes against unity. <coughs> So God is revealing these things to us and it says he who sits in the heavens laughs. Why? Because now we can sit back and we can see it from a mile away. You were military. What's the advantage of being in a high place? Well, you're in the high place. You can see what's coming. So you're aware of... You're not aware, you're, you don't have any surprises. And also, depending on... Depending on whatever you're using, um, you're going to be able to you're going to be able to hit first, and uh, the people that are coming against you are coming from a downward a downward place. So it's going to be a lot. It's a good advantage, than, right? Yeah. Yeah. You have a, we have a huge advantage, and we can see, like you said, I think one of the big things is we can see what, he, what where they're coming from. We can see what they have. We can see their weaponry. We can see everything from the high place. You know, and we can literally laugh and be like, because it, it, it kind of gets to a point where it's hysterical. You, it's just so clear what the enemy's trying to do, you know, and you can pretty much laugh it off. You know, like, really, you're going to try me like that? But it can be just little simple things like the Bible talks about where there's envy and strife, there's confusion in every evil work. It doesn't... It doesn't say, it doesn't distinguish whether that's a little bit of strife or a lot of strife. Right? Even in James, the book, I'm thinking of the book of James right now, where it says, a little piece of kindling can do what? Start a forest fire. And it's talking about the tongue in James 3. You know, how that little bitty member. You know, so we really have to guard the things that we say. Amen? So, we see when we come together, we'll have a psalm, we'll have a teaching, we'll have a tongue, a revelation, an interpretation. 
but things need to be done in decency and order. If Bobby starts sharing something, I'm not just going to like cut him off in mid sentence and then take off and start saying something else. Or if Ryan starts sharing something that the Lord's given to him, you know, Tyler's not going to just bud right in and just be like, da -da 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 -da. you know, and I, a lot of people were doing that and Paul was addressing that. So when we learn to operate in these giftings in, in services in a public setting, we want to do things in order. We want to allow people to speak. And it's okay to, to uh, for many people, multiple people to speak, but you want to do it in order. Amen? Um, the Bible says that Jesus, when the kingdom was taught, it says that the word would be accompanied with what? With signs. Can you play like a, like a glory jello or something on that same? Just kind of low, please. So this morning I want to, I have some more stuff I want to talk about. But I just want to sit here for a minute, and I want to give the Lord a chance to speak. It's something that we've been really moving towards in this class, in, this, in these teachings that we've been talking about. Um, this is a practice ground, amen? amen? Out there is a playing field. We come in here, and we get you guys get a chance to speak, share testimonies, target teach. practice. Target practice. Yeah, we come in here. This is the range. It's the firing range, right? And we're getting good because when we get out there, look, we got all these different outlets. Stop running on the treadmill every single day if you're trying to lose weight, or I'm going to jump in this pool. The best way to burn fat and get shredded. He said treadmill, and that guy said burn fat, get shredded. Um, we want to get proficient at it in here because, look, Bobby can tell you. The days are getting dark out there. There's a lot of people in oppression. There's a lot of people dying. You guys know a lot of people, I'm sure, that's died, that's OD'd. Man, there, people are dropping like flies out there. And, and lives are in the balance. It's that serious. And Jesus gave his blood for the nations. And God has made a sovereign decision to use us the body of Christ is his hands and feet and his mouthpiece to go out and reap that harvest that he paid for. Amen? You may be the only Bible that people ever encounter. And it doesn't have to be thus saith the Lord and preaching a sermon every time. It could be like I said before, Jesus loves you. Or hey, let me share my story real quick. And Bobby's taught y'all how to give that quick testimony. You don't have to give all the blood and guts and all that. You can just say, hey, look, I was lost and now I'm found. <laughs> you know, I was blind and now I see. Keep it simple, you know. And, and, and you know, you want to be spirit-led. You want the Lord to lead you because every time is not going to be the same. But really, if you're out there on the street, we're trying to, we're trying to hit it and keep moving because there's a lot of people out there we need to impact. But as we have these, we've got six, seven outreaches that we're doing a month right now we got the four monday nights we got the second saturday uh, nick and i go out on friday downtown on broadway and then we've got a redeem that's at night we got all these different outreaches and look you guys aren't here for by coincidence you're here for a reason god brought you here for such a time as this and you might not be here forever this might just be a season you might just be getting a deposit right now and, and you're going to take everything that you get and you're going to Wherever you go, you're going to take it. Whatever you get in this season, you're going to go and you're going to take it. And that's the cool thing about divine connections. There's things that I've learned with, with my walk, in my walk with the Lord over the last, since 1998, that's when I really started walking with the Lord. Over 20 years walking with the Lord, there's things that I can share that have really benefited me, that's, that's helped me succeed that's helped me grow and I can take those things and I can pass them on to you and really Bobby and I say this all the time our ceiling should be your floor right our ceiling where we're at should be your floor and you should you should go up higher the Lord wants to take y'all higher amen we're passing the baton to you guys and you're going to go up it's just a starting point. But we've got to look. What the Lord's been saying, 
we've got to stay in unity. That's so crucial in this season. Season relationships, friendships. The Lord wants us to this community that we've got going on is getting stronger. The bonds at the house are getting stronger. Man, keep pressing into that. And we're not nobody in here is perfect. Nobody in here has got it all together. So let's show a little grace to one another. You know? You got something? Go ahead. I'm not perfect. Yeah, you are, Bobby, and no one's perfect. When I first, I'm gonna tell a couple of stories. Though. Yeah. When I first got out of the program, everyone recognized that I had a spiritual gift, and I got really prideful with it. And then I had to learn the hard way. It took a couple of years to learn that character beats gifting. I, 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 I had a high word level because I sat and read the Bible a lot, and I had a gift. So. I thought that I was, um, it was pride, because I had never had anything really in my whole life, and then when you realize that really what God's giving you, giving you the riches in, in this gift that we have, like of a turnaround, you know, that he takes the foolish things of the world and then calls us kings and priests. And then you begin to like grow with him and really learn the first attack is going to be pride. Pride sucks. It causes strife. Like the root of all strife, all arguments, all divisions, all that stuff is pride. Let me tell you guys, no one's perfect. I'm not perfect. I am not perfect. God's using me and a lot of people think like, this dude has it together like no he does not have it together like if if you guys only knew like in my heart and mind like i do not have it like i am like i'm just along with the ride with the holy ghost but you take the holy ghost away from me (laughs) back you know i'm sleeping in someone's car that i stole four days ago you know, trying to find an ID to pawn something that ain't mine. <laughs> I'll tell you guys a difficult story. I got I'm with this girl. <laughs> what? So I'm doing it the right way for like the first time in my life. So her family, none of them have ever been in addiction. None of them. And uh, so, I don't know, like a month ago or something. Well, whenever we got done with the revival at that place, the Holy Ghost was off the chain. And we were like, the fire of God came. We're prophesying. We're praying for people. We're encouraging people. They're crying. You know what I mean? They're like freaking out. Like, you know, oh, my God, God loves me. James, I think this is yours, by the way. That is mine. Sure. Good looking And uh, so we do that. And we're like. I'm all on the phone, like, texting Chris. I'm like, yeah, Jesus, you know? And, like, I'm all in the car. I'm like, yeah, this is great. But, like, you know, when you flow in the gift, like, you know, when you're driving in the car and you're around people, like, there's a base of thoughts and feelings, and you can't just turn that stuff off. So her, her brother, and her, like, sister, it's her sister-in-law, but it's basically her sister. They've been friends for 10 years. They say they're going to eat downtown. It, that smoke smokes barbecue down there. Yeah, a lot. So I really want to see see my girl because she's so encouraging. But I work out here, so I only really get to see her a couple hours a week, right? And I gave a commitment to Josh and Chris when I took the job that I was going to do this job, mm-hmm. you know. So I've had to put that stuff on hold, but. I had already started dating her, so when we, I, when, when I, there was an opportunity to take the job, we prayed, and I said, this is going to be a big sacrifice on your end. You know, are you willing to do this with me? If not, then we need to take a break, and we can still be friends, and we'll link up. He had only been in a couple months, you know. And she said, no, let's do it, you know. And she never gives me a hard time or anything. It's really a blessing. Well, anyway, 
So I want to see her. It's on the way. I go. It's Smokin's Barbecue. I'm in this bar with my gift going nuts. I can feel the depression and the Jezebel spirit over here and Ahab over here and the Philistines over here. I can feel the suicide on the person at the bar. I can feel the pride. I can feel this dude judging me. I can feel that this guy, like, you know, just got done watching pornography. And I can feel this. And I'm sitting here and it's all coming against me. And I sit at the table until my back is the bar. And we're sitting at the thing. And I'm like, okay. And th their food's coming. They're like, you want to order? And I'm like, no, I don't want to order. You know? And here's another little detail to the bar. So five, for six years now, I haven't done meth or heroin for six years. That's crazy, right? But to be transparent, I've been transparent about this. Two and a half or three years ago, I relapsed on alcohol. I started a relationship out of season, right? And the girl rejected me and made me feel bad about myself about something. And it brought me all the way back to like the second or third grade, you know, when some kid put a booger in the drinking fountain and I drank it and everyone was laughing at me. And in my mind, this one exchange that was nothing more than clear boundaries that this girl was setting with me and saying, hey man, like it's just not going to work between us, which was for the better anyway, cut me so deep in my heart that I felt rejected. I felt ashamed, I, I didn't know what to do, but I had old, unrenewed areas of my mind, right? Romans 12, too, renew your mind, right? That the only thing that I knew to do in that moment was go get me a drink. And you know where I went and got that drink at? At that smoke room's barbecue. Five feet from the bar where I just pulled up like a ball site, give me a double shot of Crown Royal paid them like $20 for one drink like you know and then I went to the next bar and then I went to the liquor store and got me a, 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 a double shot of something and then the next liquor store and then I got me a little fifth all within like two hours and then I walked across the bridge to Phoenix City and got me a big bottle and drank that thing till I passed out and then the next day I went and got me another bottle and started calling people talking reckless to them Blake Russell, that guy, real good friend, called him talking reckless. Called that girl and her mama talking reckless. Called my pastor talking reckless. Called everyone that I knew talking reckless. This was two and a half years ago, man. No one's perfect. We all got stuff, right? So anyway, as I'm sitting there, I'm remembering this stuff and talking to them and my spirits open so i'm like dude you know what i'm just uncomfortable in this bar <laughs> i don't want to be here it's not that i wanted to drink but if i stayed there long enough i would because like i'm a new creation i had the addition of the holy spirit but dude like if 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 i were to be honest i'm still in recovery there's still situations like just being honest like there's still situations that trigger thought processes in me and then I recognize my thinking goes to a place that I want to respond in this way but then when I'm filled with the spirit and I've been in my word I can consciously choose to walk in the spirit in that moment rather than flex on someone I choose long suffering rather than insist on my own way I choose love rather than this and sometimes I get overwhelmed and I need to vent I vent to Chris all the time there's safe people you can do that with but for the most part like you know it's easier now but but the truth is y'all if I get squeezed enough whatever's in me is gonna come out y'all hear that if we get squeezed enough whatever's still in us is gonna come out that's why we got to go buy it and all that. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll finish the story. So then, like a week ago, um, we had went, or whenever, then the next time I go to minister with the Valley Rescue Mission, it was powerful. We're praying for people. They get a line. These dudes are breaking down. Like, that one dude breaks down. He's crying. He's feeling edified. Like, we're praying. 
<laughs> we leave from there, and then I go with them again, and then guess what? Where they want to go? Scruffy Murphy's downtown. Two places from the thing. And I'm sitting here, and I'm like, this isn't going to be good for me again. And I go into this bar, and then the enemy's on me, on me, on me, on me. And I'm very uncomfortable. I see the people at the bar, and I see myself two and a half years ago depressed, drinking because of the broken heart. I see that, you see what I'm saying? And my girl's mom and her, they both understand this stuff because they grew up in it and they know and her dad was a preacher and all this stuff. And they have enough discernment to be like, you're not comfortable here, are you? And I'm like, no. But then when you say like, oh, my gifting is freaking out, then it seems <laughs> prideful, right? Well, anyway, so I don't say anything but I get to thinking about it the entire time, and I'm like, I'm in recovery. I minister to a lot of brothers and sisters that are in recovery. I really don't even have any business being in a bar. What am I doing in here, right? In my mind, that's why I'm like, what am I even doing in here if it's not to snatch one of these dudes out of here, right? So anyway, I leave it alone. I sit through, everything's cool. I'm patient, I'm kind. The first chance I get, like, I get the check. We're with family, you know. It was her brother's idea to, like, go there anyway. None of us are drinking or anything, but everyone else in the place is. Not religion. It's just, like, I don't feel comfortable. So then I leave, and it's been, like, a month. A month later, I get word that they think that, like, I'm bougie. <laughs> They're like, you're bougie. Like, they think you're prideful. They think that the reason you don't want to go to those places is because you're stuck up, basically. Or whatever. Something along those lines. That might be not 100% accurate. But I've been, I'm being misjudged. You see that? And I finally had to tell my girl to let them know, like, two and a half years ago, I relapsed on alcohol and made a real jerk of myself at the same places that they just don't, they're not even on that realm. They just think it's just going to get some, like, chips and some wings. And I'm thinking, like, this just reminds me. You see what I'm saying? It's not unhealthy, but then I have to communicate that. Like, you guys may think that just because, like, we have giftings and all this different kind of stuff, like, like I, that we've made it. Dude, we have not made it. We are all imperfect, dude. Like every one of us, we all have issues. We have to give each other grace. So anyway, I don't know why I wanted to share that, but I told them. I finally had to tell them. I like had to sit down and say, look, I'm in recovery. Six years off of intravenously shooting meth and heroin. Like daily. To the point where I did 10 years in and out of prison. Like, I'm in recovery, man. Two and a half years ago, something, nothing more than simple accountability and communication and something that could have been worked through triggered me to go get wasted drunk. And if I wouldn't have been surrounded by such a strong church and support system of people, it would have went bad. Because the next thing that was going to happen was that man. Okay? So, sorry I took all that time. I'm not perfect. I need grace. I need mercy. Bobby does. Me.